I'm Pamela Bisson, not Pamela or Pam, and you're watching Made In. Who invented toothpaste? I'll be honest with you, I don't really know. Don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure either. Who invented it? I don't, I don't, why are you asking me this? Why do you use toothpaste? Uh, clean teeth, fresh breath, uh, yeah, healthy gums. It makes your breath it smell your breath so right. fresh. Fresh and we look a million dollars. Yes, and that's what we want to do. <laughs> it pulls the girls, it pulls the girls. I've had them whitened, he's not had them whitened ever, and he tried to get them whitened today. Where does toothpaste come from? Uh, not Brits. Poland. <laughs> Is it? I don't know. If I was to tell you Egypt, what would you say to that? I could believe it. <laughs> Why? I don't know, but I definitely could. <laughs> Toothpaste is a very versatile product and during these hard times can be repurposed for many things. A little toothpaste does an amazing job of removing scuffs from trainers. Unruly children? Then try this as a punishment non-gel toothpaste onto a manual toothbrush and tell them to put their backs into it and scrub the sink clean. Toothpaste will help dry out a pimple. Trust me, I did this age 14. My only advice, put a little on each spot, put it on at night and simply rinse it off in the morning. Nails and teeth are both made out of enamel, so toothpaste is a great way to not only clean your nails but also give them shine and keep them healthy. Now its main purpose were to clean these. Many people believe that toothpaste and its ingredients are a modern invention. But history has tried many ways to make the palate more palatable. Now bear with me. From drinking goat's milk, to rubbing ashes of burnt mice directly onto the gnashes, to drinking tortoise blood three times a year. So what's better, a manual toothbrush or an electric toothbrush? What would you suggest? Well, this is a big, big question. It's how you brush your teeth which is the most important thing. And right. having a toothbrush, you know, when the bristles start to curl at the end, it's not doing anything, you've got to hoof it out, get another one. Yeah. In fact, I encourage people to use an electric toothbrush. Okay. You can, it's much easier to do a good job with an electric one. Right. You can do just as good a job with a manual one, but you have to be more manually dexterous, or as with, a, with, a, with a, a, an electric one, it's easy. In my opinion, definitely, electric toothbrush is much, much better. FYI, the first real electric toothbrush was produced in 1939 and developed in Switzerland. Now go swap your manual toothbrush for a battery-operated one, because they're worth it. Let's have a look at your teeth, see what we can find. Hello, my name is uh, Dr. Richard Matson, uh, BDS, LDS, RCS, England. The origins of toothpaste are uh, probably about 5000 BC and um, a piece of papyrus was found with a, with a, um, a formula on it from, um, from that sort of period describing the type of uh, ingredients used at that time. Um, iris flower consisting of black peppers, rock salt and mint. And things to be abrasive to, to remove the stains from the teeth. Hi, my name is Deepak Dole. I'm one of the dentists at Chiswick Dental Care. Uh, I've been a dentist for almost four years now. I've uh, got a BSc, Honours in Medical Biochemistry and a Bachelor of Dentistry at King's College London. How much does the ancient formula differ to the current ingredients in modern toothpaste? There are a lot of similarities, but they also differ in the form that we have better flavours now, I suppose. Basically, the idea is the same, to have your gums and teeth healthy, but the ingredients used now are definitely less natural than before. Apparently, one of the dental researchers or scientists made this formula that they found and they found it's got a very, very pungent taste. But essentially, you're looking at something that's abrasive, that's going to be cleaning and providing some kind of antibacterial products to help clean. So that's where I think the rock salt comes in, the crushed peppers probably isn't abrasive, which is very similar to some of the stuff that we're using these days. What do you recommend to your patients and why? 
I do, here in the West End of London, we do an awful lot of um, whitening procedures on teeth, lots of cosmetic -y sort of things. So I do try to recommend patients use a, a, a toothpaste with a, a whitening ingredient in it too, which will help. There's an awful lot of sensitivity of teeth these days, and uh, the, 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 the toothpaste with a desensitizing agent in are very, 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 very useful. I do not recommend any particular toothpaste to all my patients because it depends on patient needs. Uh, we have a very wide range of toothpaste on the market. We have products for people with a gums problem, preventing caries, to whiten teeth. So I can't recommend one product for all my patients. It's always based on personal needs. Well. Being an a NHS and private practice, we always like to provide evidence-based dentistry. And part of our remit here is to you know, advocate toothpaste that contains fluoride. And that's what the NHS recommends as well. Therefore, any toothpaste that contains a significant or um, you know, therapeutic amount of fluoride is what we recommend. My name is Katarzyna Abad. I'm a dentist for 10 years and I'm associated dentist here at my medic from two years. What are the most bizarre ingredients from other countries that have uh, claimed to have been used as toothpaste? In the contemporary toothpaste we have definitely more chemical ingredients which in most cases work very similar to the natural ones. You've got some very eccentric ones and you've got some ones that are still in use. Typically in the Middle East and even in say Asia you've got the miswak, you've got twigs, um, sticks from branches which they're using. The Romans used more flavors to help with the bad bread, as well as powdered charcoal. The Chinese used a very wide uh, range of substances, including ginseng, herbal mints, and salt. Things like uh, ground ox hooves, eggshells, pumice, that sort of thing. Anything that's sort of abrasive to clean the teeth, get rid of the stains, and um, perhaps also various things to make it taste a bit better. In 18th century, actually, dragon's blood was recommended, and in the next century, charcoal became very popular. Oh, we're very different now. We don't have any uh, ox's hooves in there. How much do you really believe the dragon's blood bit? Come on, be honest. Um, there is a question if we believe on dragons or no. <laughs> That's a very good answer. I like that. And also, the, of course, these days they can add other things to, like fluoride to produce decay and uh, desensitizing agents to make your teeth a bit less sensitive. Can you explain how fluoride was first introduced universally in toothpaste? Yeah, fluoride was first used in 1890s as a calcium fluoride and it was first sold in the Germany. The first usage in the United States of America was initially criticized by American Dental Association in 1937. After that, Procter & Gamble started its research program in 1940s and finally fluoride toothpaste received ADAS approval in 1950s. Fluoride was introduced into toothpaste because they realized that teeth that have been affected by fluoride are actually more resilient to decay. And fluoride has been shown to reduce the incidence of decay in teeth if you can have it um, incorporated into the structure of the tooth while the tooth is forming. So it has to be in children, of course, while your teeth are um, developing in the jaws. These discoveries go back a long way uh, when they were actually looking at the adverse effects of fluoride. Um, and based on that research, they've incorporated it in the form of sodium fluoride into your toothpastes, which allows as a varnish to provide a buffer for tooth decay and to help remineralize and strengthen your enamel that might have been damaged from acid attack when eating food. But fluoride is a poison, um, but you have to have it in very high doses to do any damage. I would say it's very, very well worth having. So as long as you won't eat your fluoride toothpaste, in my opinion, you're safe. Good, good advice. Uh, thank you very much. What is the purpose of mouthwash? The use of mouthwash is, is perhaps more just to make your breath, your mouth feel fresher. To get to the areas which you cannot reach with the toothbrush, it also kills the bacteria and makes your breath fresh. If I could use an analogy, um, the ultimate toothpaste is something that's going to clean your teeth provide you with fluoride and it's going to stay there. 
What we're essentially doing is painting your teeth. It's supposed to be a varnish. So we expect you to coat your teeth with this toothpaste, spit it out and not rinse it out. Whereas a mouthwash is just something you can just swish around, it will get rid of some of the food products, but it's not going to give you that deep clean that toothpaste provides. Well, a toothpaste is a, is, a, um, is a paste or gel used with the toothbrush to clean your teeth. And thanks to new technologies, it is now possible to combine a few active agents in the one product to achieve actually all-in-one toothpaste. But what is very important, we need to remember that the most of cleaning is uh, actually a mechanical action by the toothbrush, not by the toothpaste. Paste you use? I use a fluoride containing toothpaste. <laughs> you have very nice teeth. A certain amount of crowding, which could easily be straightened out. So too many teeth wanted. in the mouth, is that what you mean? They just need <laughs> to be uh, rearranged very slightly. Well, Back in the 50s, if you ever needed an extra pep to get you into work first thing in the morning, all you had to do was go to your wash cabinet and pull out one of these babies. Thank you, Mr Pointer. Well, if they didn't discontinue this product, who knows what bars could be serving in the 21st century. Now, you've probably guessed this already, but the world's oldest known formula for toothpaste was apparently discovered on a piece of dusty papyrus in the basement of a Viennese museum. Now, this simple yet ingenious invention began as far back as 5000 BC, where ancient Egyptians were using a tooth powder to maintain the highest oral hygiene. Now, the activity of keeping the mouth clean dates all the way back to the religious figure Buddha, it has been recorded that he would use a tooth stick from the god Saka as part of his personal hygiene regime. Hmm, very important to floss. According to Chinese history, a form of acupuncture was used in different parts of the jaw and gum to help release pain from a variety of areas in the mouth. Now, the learned man, Hong Tai, didn't use any type of needles to do this. No, 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 no. They were made of pure gold and silver he must have charged Harley Street prices. Now to the Americans, who claim they have the best teeth hygiene ever. Well, history provides us with a record of the first modern-based toothpaste in 1824, where an esteemed American dentist called Peabody was the first to blend soap into toothpaste. Well, it makes sense, I suppose. India's toothpaste tradition is based on its strong background in alternative medicine. Special twigs were used for brushing and each twig was naturally filled with a sweet nectar. Now by chewing the twig, bear with me, and rubbing it against the teeth, India became renowned for its white teeth, fresh breath and clean mouths. The future is something that happens in the future. And a young lady has revolutionised the way we brush our teeth. And this toothbrush could be the future. Whatever the claims of yesteryear, isn't it wonderful that oral hygiene is still very much the number one priority in our morning freshening routine? Thanks for watching. If you think anything's been unfairly claimed, then get your comments in. Now you're free to do something much more worthwhile. And like a Facebook page. Ta-ra! And you've got fabulous teeth, sir, if you don't mind me saying. <laughs> Great teeth. So it's not true what they say about the Brits and their teeth? No.